other way pronounce your name, please? Dizdar. Dizdar. Dilek is Dilek, right? Dizdar is Dizdar. And that's a good German name. It's a very good German name. But it's a slightly Turkish perhaps. It's a slightly Turkish name, yeah. I'm Turkish. Good. I'm a Turkish citizen. And German or just Turkish? No, I just Good. have a Turkish passport. Really? Okay. Yeah, the Germans don't allow you to have both. Right, so. okay. Your, what's your job, Dilek? My job yeah. is, uh, well, I'm a professor of, of translation studies in the Department of Intercultural German Studies here in Gamasheim mm -hmm. at the University of Mainz, the Faculty of Translation Studies, Linguistics and Cultural Studies. The so. Holy Trinity, we call it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the cultural studies part. So you're responsible part. for training a lot of people. I'm responsible for training a lot of people, yes. Gammasheim, I, I think we have around 2,000 mm -hmm. students in Gammasheim. And uh, the German department hosts around 900 students, 800 to 900 students. And we host all the foreign students. I mean, okay. all the students okay. who study German as their first foreign language mm -hmm. and have other native mm -hmm. languages. Uh, come to our department. Okay, so you these days are you doing a lot of administration or you're also teaching as well? I, I teach, yes, yeah. I teach translation theory yeah. courses, lecture courses as well as seminar courses. And you do research? And the master's yeah. program and yeah. I do research, yeah. yeah, these days I've been very busy with the Congress right. organization, yeah. but I do research and, but of course there's a lot of administration as well, unfortunately. Okay. okay. Yeah. But what kind of research are you interested in these days? I have a, a project which is called uh, the right to translate, mm -hmm. the right to translate and interpret, mm -hmm. it means. Mm -hmm. And there I collaborate with Shemna Bahadur, she does a lot of work in uh, community interpreting, mm -hmm. in the field of community interpreting. And I'm more uh, interested in the theoretical framework, mm -hmm. uh, what, what is the relationship between justice and translation. Well, justice as an idea and also language rights and so on. So other fields mm -hmm. are involved, of course, um, in, in that uh, it is well, it has to have an interdisciplinary outlook mm -hmm. because there is legal studies and there is um, the whole field of trans uh, of language rights because there has been yes. done yes. a lot in, in the field of language so rights. So the right to translate or the right to be translated? Both. So, both. Okay. Both. Yeah. Yes. I'm interested in both, in fact. Uh, well. It, when you talk of interpreting and of community interpreting, for example, it's all, it's more often the right to be mm -hmm. interpreted, to, to be translated. Uh, but of course you could also speak of the right to translate uh, in terms of literature, mm -hmm. because you know it's very selective, the markets are very selective and so on. So just think about the texts that uh, the have the right to get access to. Yeah. But do you have any cited market. as an example of a country that translates a lot? It translates a lot, but uh, look at Turkish literature, for example. Mm. Uh, there are really big holes in the whole mm. system of, of translated literature. Um, Turkish literature translated into German. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, book fair where Turkish was um, guest of honor. Mm -hmm. That was back in 2008, I, I think. Yes, 2008. I have the poster there, that's yes. why I <laughs> like that the poster. Um, and that, there we had a, a lot of literature translated, that, that was translated into German, but still it was very selective and then, you know, for example, we have a trilogy and there was some funding, so mm -hmm. a, a publishing house did one of the volumes, but then the funding was over and you don't have the other two volumes of the okay. trilogy. Okay. And even Nazim Hikmet, a very well-known poet, mm. uh, he is not, not all of his work is yes. translated in, into German. So. Okay. Let's go back, when you were 23, 24, 25, what country were you in then? I was in Turkey. <laughs> well, you when, I was when I was 23, I was in Turkey, so mm -hmm. yes. I, I did my uh, BA in Translation and Interpreting at Boazic University, mm -hmm. at Bosphorus University, and then I did an MA in, in General Linguistics, in Theoretical Linguistics, also at Boazic mm -hmm. University, and I was a research assistant there mm -hmm. when I was 23, yes. Uh, so I, I was interested in seeing uh, why translation scholars were so much against linguistics. That's what why mm -hmm. I did in yes. linguistics. And then I understood. <laughs> no, that was a joke. But, uh, yeah, yeah, systems you were in touch with Fermer and those people at that stage? Or is that no, at that stage I didn't have anything to do with Fermer. In right. fact, uh, we had a teacher, Ushin uh, Benke uh, Önar, was our professor at Boazic University. And she 
advised Chevlin and me to go to Germany because at that time uh, English, well, the English language material was really well received in Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, especially descriptive translation studies mm -hmm. uh, have been really taken up and it, it also fits very well to describe uh, the history of tra uh, translation in Turkey, the Ottoman period and so on, and there was uh, uh, some work that was already there. And uh, our professor said, well, you know, you, you, you speak German, you're bilingual, so why don't you go and try to get something else, so the German tradition, to Boazic University. Mm -hmm. there, there are other places. Istanbul University, for example, is a, a German medium, or they had a de department for German and uh, German translation studies, but at Bosphorus University we only had English. Where did you get your German from? I was born in Germany. Oh, we missed that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So my okay. parents were uh, belonged to, to to the first generation right. guest workers. And then you went to Turkey when I was fourteen. Right. So you yeah. had to work on your Turkish and things like yes. that. Yes. I well, I was brought up bilingual because my parents didn't really speak uh, in, uh, German very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we spoke Turkish at home. Okay. But then uh, we went to uh, we uh, went back. I mean. It was not back for me, but for my parents, of course, to Turkey, and I uh, went to high school in Izmir, mm -hmm. which is yeah. a, a, sure. nice, yeah, a very nice place. And then I um, studied at Boğaziçi University in Istanbul, uh, and came then to back to Germany, so to say, right. when I was you know, twenty-four. Or so. so to study that, to do to study, yes. to do a doctorate then, or, or yeah, what I wanted to thing? do a doctorate mm -hmm. here, so uh, I contacted Hans Vermeer. Uh, or we contacted Hans Vermeer and he said, well, yes, um, you could come and let's see and let's meet and uh, how it works out, uh, but you would have to study all these, you know, th that was a German doctorate and mm -hmm. you had to have uh, three subjects, three mm -hmm. areas you have to study in, so, and if Hans Vermeer said we shouldn't come to Heidelberg, but we should try to go to Gallenstein. Why is that? Yeah, that was Because he was at Heidelberg. He was at Heidelberg at that time, yes. Well, I think he was very disappointed and he was a little, well, he didn't like uh, the atmosphere at Heidelberg mm -hmm. University. Yes. Heidelberg University used to be quite conservative mm -hmm. and was not really ready to accept uh, innovation in, in, in the field. Mm -hmm. So uh, Hans Vermeer himself had a very hard time in Heidelberg. That's why he said, okay, you can come and have, you know, to courses and to discussions and so on to Heidelberg, and it's not so far away, mm -hmm. so why don't you go to Germersheim? And at that time, there was Heinz Göring in Germersheim, mm -hmm. so we did... Uh, uh, Heinz Göring did cultural studies, anthropological, yes, right. ethnological cultural right, studies. Right. So uh, that was one of those subjects then for me as well, uh -huh. uh, uh, cultural studies, cultural anthropology yeah. um, it was. And then I did um, translation studies and German studies. So, so it, it took me quite a long time and then I was into all these uh, fields and I was very much interested in philosophy and I had the chance to, to um, well I had already started because I had a very good teacher in Istanbul as well and I had taken all my electives during my studies from, philo from, philosophy, from the philosophy department and then there was Jacques Derrida coming to Istanbul, and mm -hmm. I also went to Istanbul uh, and was part of the seminar group and discussion group and so on. So I, I met him and then I, I added Paris to my trips mm -hmm. and, and to my field of interest, so to say, and I slightly changed also the orientation in my dissertation. Uh, Good. So while you're doing the doctorate, you're between Germersheim, Istanbul, and Heidelberg Paris. And Paris. Heidelberg and yeah. Paris. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was very exciting. It took me quite a long time, but it was a very exciting period in my life, I have to say. You know, we, we, I, I know Gideon Turi's done studies, bibliometric studies, on translation studies, mm -hmm. and we noticed that after Scopus theory, after mm -hmm. Vermeer, etc., there's very little activity in publishing in translation studies and research. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we have great activity coming out of Germersheim mm -hmm. from two Turkish women. Well, <laughs> Do you feel alone a bit 
in the German environment in translation studies, or are you getting support? I I, I don't feel alone anymore. I, mm. I there was a time where I really felt quite alone, and I was also reluctant in coming to uh, Germany or coming back to Germany because I taught at Basel University for some time. Oh, after the doctorate, you went. Yeah, back I went there. back then. Oh, okay, came. okay. Uh, but uh, there is a different environment here now because uh, Gamma time was for a very long time uh, not really accepting translation studies as a field. It, that sounds awkward. Gamma time. Really this is where yes, you train yes. two thousand translators yes. interpreters. Yes, but still we have very few professorships uh, called translation mm. studies. You know, w which have translation studies in their titles. Yes, yes. Uh, so we used to have a lot of philologists, uh, a lot of linguists, and cultural studies people, and some of them really didn't even touch the subject of translation. No, you had experts in Scottish, Scottish studies yes, and yes. good experts, uh, no doubt. But there was no relation to translation really and to the field of translation. And they were even, you know, they, uh, they thought it would be um, a bad thing to, you know. It, it would not mm -hmm. be prestigious to work on translation yes. because that was part of applied linguistics yes. in the German tradition for a very long time. So, so I think that was part of the issue that translation was handled as part of applied linguistics and more of that. Uh, linguistic tradition, you know, so it was uh, seen as a technical issue, mm -hmm. not really a scholarly field. So you helped transform translation studies. At I, the same don't time, so. I, I don't know. Well, Vermeer uh, started that really. Yeah, really, I think really Vermeer started. started that. And after Vermeer, there was Hönig here, there was Kussmaul mm -hmm. here who continued Kupfloserei, they continued mm -hmm. uh, the uh, functional tradition in Germa's time. But then uh, Kusmar retired, Hönig died, unfortunately, and Jakubschlo uh, died also. There is Don Kirali mm -hmm. who, who does very interesting work. Uh, but now we have uh, colleagues in cultural studies, and also when we appoint new professors, uh, we are very keen on uh, looking at how interested they are in mm -hmm. translation, in the field of translation studies and in translation related issues. So we expect them to, to relate to translation in, in some way. But of course, there are also a lot of young people here now. We had the chance to establish a doctoral group some years ago, three years ago, uh, and the, the, the people gathered around translation studies, and they're really very good people. Uh, Lavinia Helle has just completed her doctorate. I think it's a great work she did, and we have some other young people coming up now. Uh, so that there is a community. Mm. There is a real community, mm. and then there are these interesting projects. And but you're, you're not in that functionalist tradition, I mean, you're doing quite politically engaged translation studies here. That's true, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something new in the German tradition. I think well. so, yeah. yes. The German tradition of translation studies uh, was not interested in all the ideology and politics and so on so mm -hmm. for a very long time. Uh, but I think it's time and I, it, it works out somehow. And I have colleagues who are interested um, from the pr perspective of cultural studies, who are in cultural studies and are interested in aspects like nation building mm -hmm. and politics of translation in, in that sense. So uh, we are we have some uh, common projects there. We had a conference on translation and nation building, w which we organized together and so on. Mm -hmm. What kind of research do you think we need in translation studies now? Well, or is that the answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we, we need uh, more research in politics and politics of translation, but also in the politics of translation studies. Politics, so, policy, or both together? Both, to, yeah. both together, okay. both together. And I think we should more, uh, I think it is time, or we have a lot of work and a lot of publications in translation studies now. Uh, I think it really makes sense. bibliometrical research is interesting, but we, of course, have to do a lot of uh, qualitative work on that. And um, to see what, uh, what ideologies and what factors and what power relations affect uh, the outlook of the discipline itself mm -hmm. and its institutions, mm -hmm. and uh, just to have some critical uh, mm -hmm. attitude towards all this, you know, the EU institutions and then the, the funding policies and, you know, the, the new programs after the Bologna process or within the Bologna process, what, what did they do to translation studies and what, what is happening mm -hmm. to the discipline and wh where do we want the discipline to be in, in 10 years or so? Final question. You, you have a beautiful son. I do. <laughs> and, no, because you're one of these people moving between countries. Mm -hmm. for a, so what language do you speak with your son? Turkish. Within, but he goes to school in Germany. 
he, yeah, he, so. he goes to the kindergarten, right. and uh, there he speaks German. But uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm like a police woman <laughs> uh, at home because I want my husband also to speak Turkish to the guy, uh, to the kids. Okay, to your hus hmm? husband is. He's of Turkish origin, but right. he, he he came to Germany when he was ten or so. Right, so okay. he's socialized in German and right, okay. he studies here so and so on. So fighting back. It's very difficult to uh, yeah. nowadays to um, keep Turkish uh, alive because it has a very low status. It has a very low social status as a language, mm. so that uh, the young people they they think it's not nice. It's yeah. not chic to. So having more Turkish. translations or higher culture, I mean, it would also help the status of Turkish. Of course, general. you know, uh, I mean, the, the issue with the book fair, I think it was one uh, landmark to say Turkish is not only a migrant language, it's also a language of literature and of culture and so on. So there should be more that can be offered to those young people, of course. Great. Thanks very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much.